would like to begin by asking you uh, why it was that Canada took such an onerous burden upon itself when you must have known that this uh, could possibly jeopardize Canadian nationals. There was no doubt right from the outset that it, that it placed our own embassy staff in very real danger. But I also know that had the shoe been on the other foot, um, you people would have done exactly the same thing and there was no question in our minds when we first learned of the six members of your diplomatic staff who were needing refuge that uh, we would supply it. There was just never any question. And what do you think the situation is going to be now in terms of Canada's relations with Iran? Well, they haven't been exactly cordial in the last few months. Uh, when I spoke at the Security Council of the United Nations, uh, we, we stated very firmly how thoroughly disgusted and how much we, we uh, disapproved of the actions they'd taken. And we have pretty well severed all connections with them in commercial and trading relationships. So uh, I don't think that our relations are going to be uh, in any way affected. They just have not existed recently. You expressed some concern earlier today at the fact that Mr. Pellicci had broken this story when he did. Why concerned? Everyone's safely out. Well, the only concern I had, and I think Mr. Pelche knew this from the beginning because he's been in on the story since early December, the concern I had was whether or not the story, once it broke, would have uh, some kind of repercussions against the hostages who still remain in Tehran because it's their safety that we are concerned about as well. But did you seriously think that this story could have been kept quiet once these uh, Americans returned? No, to tell you the truth, I didn't. I had hoped that it would remain as quiet for as long as it did. To be able to keep it for three months in these circumstances was quite a feat because it took a lot of arrangement, a lot of, of uh, exchanges between your State Department, our Department of External Affairs, and particularly our embassy in Tehran to make the arrangements for um, the extrication of both our own diplomats and your diplomats uh, in order to bring it about. So we did awfully well to keep it for three months. I guess we really couldn't have held it much longer. In a moment, I want to bring Mr. Pelletje into this conversation, but let me ask you, you in fact brought these American citizens out on forged Canadian passports. Did you have any trouble with your own government in doing that? No, we did not. It was a, it was a decision which was taken by the Prime Minister and myself and we asked for the approval of the cabinet uh, there weren't a great many explanations given we but we uh, certainly got that approval without any question whatsoever mr pelletier you have known about this story now since the beginning of december may i ask you how did you first catch on how did you first find out that there were in fact other americans outside the outside the embassy well it was basically a question of logic we came to, uh, we realized suddenly that there was such a discrepancy between the numbers of uh, American diplomats being held hostage and the numbers who were actually supposed to be in post in, in Tehran that uh, we quickly came to the conclusion that some must have uh, must still be in Iran and, and hiding somewhere and when we understood and heard that the there was some kind of an agreement between Western countries to provide asylum for each other's diplomat, then we said, well, obviously the Canadians must be harboring some of them. We brought that to the attention of uh, various sources here in Washington, and they confirmed it. But you didn't run with the story. You've had it now for, what, almost two months? Almost two months. But the reason why we didn't run for it, and I must tell you it was very easy for the first three weeks, was that we agreed with the uh, both Canadian and American uh, government that it was uh, a matter of life and death for the... Uh, for the Americans who, who escaped the uh, embassy takeover in Tehran. We also understood that, the, uh, as one American told us, that it was in comparison you know, to the situation of a Jewish family hiding in Paris. I mean, there's no really any value in publishing that when you know that the only thing it will bring about is, is an increasing uh, crisis. You know? What then finally convinced you that you should run with the story? Well, the, uh, when yesterday we heard that the uh, Mr. Clark, the Prime Minister of Canada, had decided to close the embassy. Uh, we knew that was a, a sort of a cover-up to, uh, to enable the Americans to escape from, from Iran as Canadian diplomats. And also when Mrs. McDonnell, uh, in her press conference on uh, Monday evening, 
said that she had been uh, thanked by the Secretary of State. Well, we uh, obviously thought, well, she's inkling that there's more to the story than actually what was said during the day. So we said it's only a matter of hours now before it, it comes out, so we might as well bring it uh, out in the open. Also, we were convinced that the situation now in Iran, as far as the hostages is concerned, is improving. In addition, then, to the six diplomats who came out, incidentally, when? Over this past weekend? Did they come out in one batch or in several batches? Do you know? Well, as far as, uh, you know, I think the, the, the ministry, the Canadian Ministry of External Affairs, at some point, will come out with the full story on this. But I think, as I understood it, that the, the final six left over the last three days, I think, and that they, you know, they took commercial flights, as I understand it, and, and, uh, and t uh, you know, f found freedom. But I was initially on the, under the understanding that they left together. I mean, the six were together, but then, you know, that's a rather minor point in the, in the whole story. Well, since we have the Minister of External Affairs here, uh, Ms. McDonald, can you clear that up for us? Did they leave together, or did they leave uh, over a period of days? I can tell you the whole story. Um, we had been planning this for some time, and uh, they left on an early morning flight on Monday morning. They left together. Um, it had been rehearsed beforehand. Uh, they went out and flew to West Germany. And then uh, on a later flight that day, the four remaining members of our embassy left. I'm intrigued. When you say it was rehearsed, how is this kind of thing rehearsed? <laughs> well, it's rehearsed in the sense that we went through various measures to make sure that there would be no hitches in the final plan. We, we, uh, we, we knew that there were various checkpoints along the way, and uh, we wanted to test those out. How did you test them? Well, I'm afraid that I can't go into all of the details of that because there may be other times that we want to use similar processes. But in fact, it almost sounds as though you had some people going in and out before this, this last run. Would that be a fair, uh, a fair guess? As I mentioned earlier, there had been a number of people, American citizens, whom we had helped through um, uh, to get out of the country at earlier points, yes. What about the, the Iranian officials? Were there any at all, and obviously I don't expect you to name names, but were there any at all who were helpful to you in any way? Not that I know of. I, our work was completely, it was, a, it was a, a joint effort with State Department officials, with the officials in my department here in Ottawa, and particularly under the direction of our ambassador in Tehran, Ambassador Ten, uh, Ken Taylor. He was there on the spot, and he was calling the shots as we went along. You're rather pleased with the job that he did, aren't you? I'm absolutely uh, thrilled with it. Uh, he, he's, he's carried on under tremendous pressure for the past three months, knowing that uh, he had our six guests with him all the time, and um, acted very coolly, very matter-of-factly. Was it, was it his idea, Ms. McDonald, to, uh, to take them out over this past weekend under the cover, the, uh, under the cover the, of the uh, Iranian presidential elections? Yes. We had looked at the most propitious occasion in order to have people moved. And uh, it was decided that this past weekend, when people were otherwise preoccupied with internal matters, that it would be a good opportunity. Well, now, Lord knows, over the past three months, the Iranians have been preoccupied with an awful lot of internal matters. Were there any other times during those three months when you had considered taking the Americans out? No, because we didn't... It took a lot of lead time to put the various... Um, all the various methods and procedures into place. And uh, we just didn't have it ready prior to that, or at least not long before that. Mr. Pelletier, if I could return to you for a moment, I don't want to embarrass Ms. McDonald by pressing the issue, but do you happen to know uh, what kinds of measures the Canadian government may have taken as a means of dress rehearsal, of finding out whether this thing would work? Well, uh, what I know from the sources that I've had so far was that the Canadian provided some consular officers who, uh, with the falsified documents and visas and various uh, documents that the Iranian government required to go through a, a border check, they, they tested these documents by uh, going through the border a various number of times and, uh, and test the, uh, the forgery that had been done uh, in conjunction by, uh, with the Canadians and the Americans. And uh, obviously it worked very well because it seems that they were able to prove that the 
Iranians didn't see the difference between their own documents and the one fabricated here. Well, now, Miss McDonald, you're sitting there absolutely emotionless, not showing any reaction at all. Uh, is, is Mr. Filici on the mark? Well, I'm afraid that that's something I'm just going to say no comment.